Hi guys, so here we are going to see some server side validation thing. Uh, in my last video, if you remember, I have shown you that we have created a manual report over here. As you can see, this is the report. And when we click on the edit link, uh, we uh, open a form where we, we are able to update the update or delete the record. Okay, and when we click on create a blank form gets opened and we, we will be able to enter the data over here and we can create the create the record. In this video, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, show you some validation thing. For example, if uh, I mean, uh, for example, these two fields should be mandatory. If user will try to, you know, submit or create the blank uh, data, they shouldn't. It shouldn't allow them to, you know, create the record. Or uh, if they will try to enter, uh, you know, uh, some name over here, it should give a validation that you haven't entered correct email address or something like that. Yeah, so I'll just give you a, ser a server side validation today and you'll be able to understand, uh, okay, this is how it works so that you can use your business logic to do it. All right, so I'm going to uh, go into this page first where this form is created. And here in this form, you'll see that we have uh, created all these items and buttons and everything. Okay, so a uh, server side condition can be found over here. Let me just a uh, little bit increase the window. Yeah, so you can see we have rendering dynamic actions, processing and page shared components. If you'll go to this processing section here, you will find that you have after submit thing, then you have validating. There is a process. We had written three processes in, in the last video and there is something called branch, right? So here in the validating, in this section, we used to write the validation thing, right? All the validation uh, uh, business logic and everything we used to write over here, the server side validation I'm saying, okay? So uh, for example, let's say if I want to make this field as mandatory field, uh, what I can do, I'll right click over here and create a validation. Here in the validation, I'll just give a, a name, uh, a valid name or any name to this uh, val uh, validation. For example, mandatory full name. And, uh, okay, sorry, let me just correct the spelling. Yeah, so here we have written mandatory full name. The validation, uh, the type we are going to choose uh, item is not null, okay? We have other options also, if you'll see. We have a lot of these options. I will choose item is not null. And uh, which item? Here we'll have to highlight that item. I'm going to say full name should not be null. But if user will enter null value or user will keep it blank, we'll throw an error that. Please enter full name. Okay. And if it is okay, then let it be. Okay, and here the display location is there. Display location is in line the field and in notification. I'll show you what, what it means. Let it be default one. Here in the server side condition, I will say when user will click on create button. Okay, and just save it. So we have written this validation. Now let me uh, come and refresh this uh, frame, uh, reload frame. This got refreshed. Now if I'll try to create it, I got this message. Please enter the full name. How, how we got it? Because we have written a validation over here. All right. Uh, now uh, let me just close it and click on create. Now you can see this is a full name, but user, I mean, we want user that uh, as soon as he will look into the item, he should be able to find that, okay, this is a mandatory field. For that, what we can do, let me go to this full name item. And here uh, down in the appearance section, you'll find that we have an, a template called required floating. We will select this one required floating. And you'll find that, uh, you know, uh, the uh, required will get highlighted over here. Let me just refresh this frame and you will see that as this is a required will, we made it a required. We got this required thing over here. Now with email, we will give some validation uh, how we can do that. Let me again go back to processing and I'll create another validation here. I will say email validation and an email validation. 
we can write a plc equal code uh, or what i will do i will select function body returning error text i'll select this this type and here we will write that uh, let me just make a declare thing and uh, begin here i'll say that if uh, email yeah is not or emit not like i will say if it doesn't contain at the rate then uh, if this not like this then return email this is not a valid email id this is not a valid email id okay i'm just giving an example this might not be a good uh, you know way to find the correct email address but i'm just going to give you an example you can include your logic over here i'll do end if and uh, end again you can write exception and everything so that should be all up to you but let me just validate it and click on ok again in the server side condition i will say it should get validated on create button let me just save it and uh, just close and click on create it got refreshed now i'll just write a full name as ram and here uh, i'll just enter the name over here i'm not going to write the email address click on create and we got this error that this is not a email, uh, valid email id this is what we want right and if i will say uh, that okay but uh, i want uh, i want one thing over here that whenever i got the error this field should get highlighted for that thing what i can do here you can see the display location in line with field handy notification and here we have to mention the associated item which item it is actually as associated with so here we'll have to uh, select the item so as soon as we do that uh we will be able to you know let me just refresh the page and see we will be able to get that highlight uh thing i'll just give a name over here and i'll just give a name i'll say uh gmail.com something like this and we'll just try to create it and we got this uh, you know error message that this is not a valid email id now this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to enter uh, right at the rate over here and I'll click on create and you can see that it got created. Okay, I will be able to search the record over here. And uh, this is the one what we have created. So this is how you can give a server side validation. We call it as server side validation. Okay. Uh, you can explore by yourself. We have a lot of other types over here. If you want, you can make item is not zero or PLC equal error or expression or things like that. If you have any question or any or any concern, let me know in the comment box or the app what I have created. You can raise your feedback over there also. That's for video. That's for this video. Let me know if you have any uh, feedback or any suggestion. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed it.